Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, we'll talk about making architectural decisions and a very common problem called analysis paralysis and some techniques for overcoming that. It's very common when we make an architectural decision uh, to enter into what's called analysis paralysis. Uh, comments such as, I know I need to make a decision, but I'm afraid I'll make the wrong one. I better wait a while before I kind of jump the gun on this. Or we may hear comments or even say comments like, I know I'm holding up the development team, but I'm, I'm just really not ready to make a decision yet. Or even things like, what if I'm wrong in my decision? I better wait until I have all the information I need. These are great examples of what we get into called analysis paralysis, which actually is an anti-pattern. However, all of these statements and this action of deferring kind of decisions also describes another anti-pattern. And that anti-pattern is called covering your assets anti-pattern. Now, this architectural anti-pattern is involved with making architectural decisions. And this anti-pattern occurs covering your assets by avoiding or deferring making decisions because you're afraid you'll make the wrong ones. This is a fairly common and very frustrating problem, uh, not only with architects, but also other kinds of teams where due to stubbornness or the fear of being wrong or fearing you don't have the right or complete information, you wait and defer on making decisions. Let me show you two techniques you can use uh, that will help you overcome analysis paralysis. The first involves this anti-pattern here, covering your assets anti-pattern. And it involves something called the last responsible moment. And let me explain uh, what that is. You see, in this graph right here, we have time going across and then a magnitude, low or high. If we are faced with an architectural decision and we make that decision immediately, uh, the risk that we make, make the wrong one is fairly high at low times. In other words, make that decision immediately. But as we start gathering information, as we start thinking more about the problem, notice on this curve that the risk tends to go down. This is just natural. However, there's another factor to take into account, and that is cost of a decision. You see, if we make a decision immediately, the cost is fairly low. But the longer we wait on making a decision, the cost starts rising, and in most cases, exponentially. And so we start to see that we've got two factors involved in making decisions. Well, if I make a decision right now, my development team can immediately get working on this problem. However, the longer I wait, the more expensive that decision becomes because I may be holding teams up. However, when these two lines cross, that is what is really called the last responsible moment. This is the last responsible time to actually make that decision. And because as I wait, I'm receiving no benefit whatsoever. I'm reducing that risk, but I'm significantly increasing that cost. And so one of the techniques you can use is this last responsible moment of kind of tracking and charting the overall risk versus how much the deferring of this decision is costing me. And look for that intersection. So this is a one technique called the last responsible moment. Another technique we can use is actually called trade-off analysis. This technique, analyzing trade-offs, can actually help us avoid analysis paralysis and make a decision possibly faster than the last responsible moment. Let me show you an example. Let's say we have a service here, a notification service, and we're wondering whether we should break that up into three separate services. Well, I'm not sure. Let me keep deferring that. One of the things we can use is modern trade-off analysis. 
And it all starts with understanding the business drivers. Uh, for example, for this particular system, the business is most concerned about time to market. And so now we ask, using our translation engine as an architect, well, what are the corresponding architectural characteristics that would support this business need, time to market? And those happen to be three main things. High levels of maintainability of our system, the ease of finding where to change the code. Testability, which is the ease of and completeness of testing. And finally, deployability, uh, the ceremony involved, the frequency of deployment, and also the overall risk of deploying our software. And we take these factors, which form capabilities in the architecture, and now start to do trade-off analysis. We can do the trade-off analysis first, but we can't make a decision until we know these two things. So I usually start with the business drivers, understand the characteristics, and then undergo trade-off analysis. If we look at a single service, uh, we can see that, well, based on the interaction of the functionality, I get much better performance. And with a single deployment unit, I have transactionality. So I have ACID transactions. But if I break the services apart into each of their uh, units, in other words, uh, uh, notifying via an SMS, notifying via an email, or notifying via letter, I see immediately I get much better scalability because I can only scale those particular notification pieces that need to be scaled. Also, I get much better fault tolerance. If email goes down, I'm not impacted by sending texts. Also, it's easier to maintain any one of these three or even adding an additional notification mechanism or means, uh, but also my testing scope is smaller, hence it's easier to deploy. I have less deployment risk. So we do this trade-off analysis and now we come back to kind of our flow here and realize that now that we have our business drivers, our architecture characteristics and our trade-off analysis, now I can look and say, well, does performance really impact uh, time to market? Is it part of my architectural characteristics? As a matter of fact, we can go through all of these, but we realize that, but wait, if we break apart our service, we get better scalability. But is that a business need? Is that a capability based on these characteristics and architecture needs to support? A and the answer is no. It turns out it's these three. Because if we take those three characteristics, we can map them back to our architecture characteristics that translate from those business drivers and see that those match. And we can also say, well, do those three help us with time to market? And in fact, that is what helps us with time to market. And so by doing this, we don't need to leverage the last responsible moment. We don't need any additional information, but rather we can now make our decision. So you can see the balance between these two techniques. In other words, this modern trade-off analysis technique allows us to be able to make a decision based on some sort of justification, that business need. However, the last responsible moment technique comes in by gathering enough information. And that is what are the business needs and the corresponding architecture characteristics that that architecture needs to support. Uh, these two techniques are two out of many uh, that will help you avoid uh, this analysis paralysis problem uh, when making architecture decisions. So this has been Lesson 206, Architecture Decisions, Overcoming Analysis Paralysis. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned next month on the first Monday of the month for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.